Hi friends, hope you are doing well. In this video, I'm going to discuss about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is a person in the Godhead. The God has chosen to express himself in three distinct personalities. God the Father, God the Son and God the Holy Spirit. They are three distinct personalities but they are one. They are one God. The Holy Spirit plays a very important role to bring people to Christ. Means when a person hears the gospel message, the Holy Spirit brings the conviction of sin in that person's heart. Not only that, the Holy Spirit helps that person to repent from his sins. When a person become born again, the Holy Spirit helps that person to live in holiness in everyday life. The Holy Spirit helps that person to live in obedience towards God. Also, the Holy Spirit helps the born again person in the works of ministry. In the book of Bible, the Holy Spirit is mentioned in the time of creation. In Genesis chapter 1 verse 2, the Holy Spirit was involved in the creation of this earth. After that, we can see the Holy Spirit was involved in the life of the people of the Old Testament. The Holy Spirit used to empower the people of Old Testament. He used to help them. He used to guide them to obey God. The Holy Spirit is another counselor. The dictionary meaning of counselor is someone who is trained to listen to people and give them right advice about their problems. When Lord Jesus was doing ministry on this earth, he was a teacher to his disciples. Also, he was a counselor to his disciples. As a counselor, he used to encourage his disciples, he used to rebuke them, he used to correct them, and he used to guide them to the right directions. Lord Jesus said that the Holy Spirit will be another counselor to the born again disciples. Another counselor means the Holy Spirit does the same function. The Holy Spirit encourages, rebukes, strengthens and guides the disciples in the will of God. Lord Jesus says in John chapter 14 verse 16 to 18, And I will pray the Father and he will give you another helper that he may abide with you forever, the Spirit of Truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Here, Jesus Christ mentions that the Holy Spirit will live inside the believers. The Holy Spirit is not only a counselor, but also the Holy Spirit lives inside a person who received new life in Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit connects the heart of God with the heart of man. The scripture says when we have intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit searches our heart and he knows the heart of God. Then he connects up heart of God with heart of man. It works like this. The Holy Spirit searches the heart of man. The Romans chapter 8 verse 27 says, Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. The Holy Spirit searches the heart of God and he knows the heart of God. Scripture says in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 and 11 But God has revealed them to us through his Spirit For the Spirit searches all things, yes, the deep things of God For what man knows the things of a man except the Spirit of the man which is in him Even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God in this way, the Holy Spirit becomes the connecting link in between your heart and the Father God's heart. 
the Holy Spirit searches your heart. He knows your problem and then he takes it to the Father and he brings back the answer from the Father God to you. The Holy Spirit helps us to live a new way of life. When a person receives new life in Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside a person. Then the Holy Spirit helps that person to live a new way of life. Bible tells us the Holy Spirit gives us new birth. The Holy Spirit makes us one with the Lord in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit teaches and guides us. The Holy Spirit gives us wisdom and revelation. The Holy Spirit enables us to live a holy life. The Holy Spirit helps us in prayer. The Holy Spirit strengthens and imparts resurrection life. The Holy Spirit transforms us in the likeness of Christ. Man wants to reach out to God. That is the desire of man. But without receiving the Holy Spirit, a man follows the religion. And in the religion, there are laws. Man wants to follow those laws to become righteous. So through the self-effort, man wants to reach out to God and he fails miserably. But God made a way out for us. When we receive new life in Jesus Christ, God gives his spirit inside us. The Holy Spirit who comes and lives inside us. The Holy Spirit enables us to obey God in everyday life. The Holy Spirit helps us to live in holiness in everyday life. The Holy Spirit helps us to do the works of the ministry in everyday life. In Romans chapter 7 verse 6 says, But now by dying to what once bound us, we have been released from the law so that we serve in the new way of the spirit and not in the old way of written code. Old way of obeying God was through religion, through self-effort. But new way of obeying God is through the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit in you is the seal of ownership of God in your life. If you have received the Holy Spirit, that means that is a seal of ownership of God, means you belong to God and God sealed you with the Holy Spirit. The Bible tells about our salvation in terms of redemption. Redemption means to buy back something. Bible tells us that we belong to God. God created us, but because of our sin and rebellion, we were separated from God. Man is separated from God because of his sin and rebellion. Not only that, man is under the control and dominion of the enemy, the Satan. Now, God wants to redeem us. He wants to save us. He wants to buy us back into his kingdom. He wants to give us new life. So God sent his son, Jesus Christ. Jesus came, he told us to repent and turn from our sin and rebellion. And then Jesus died on the cross. He paid the price for our sin and rebellion. Now, because Jesus paid the price for all of us on the cross, he has the right to buy us back from the kingdom of Satan into the kingdom of God. Now, through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, God can buy us back into his kingdom. He can redeem us back into his kingdom. In the ancient times, the redemption was a three steps process. In the first step, a person purchases the item that he wants to redeem, means he pay the price for the item he wants to buy. The second stage is the owner of the item who bought the item, who paid the price for the item, he will put a seal on that item. He will put his own seal on that item. The seal means he is the owner of that item, means that item belongs to him. Also, that item can be separated from other item because of 
it is having particular kind of cell. So this is the second process of the redemption. The third process is the owner of the item will go out from this place. He will leave the item in that particular place or the shop. He will go out from that place and he will come back after certain time. And when he will come back, he will take the item. He will identify the item by the seal on it. You are lost from God because of your sin, but God paid the price through Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross and he paid the price for your sin. Now God bought you back. Not only that, God put a seal in you. God put his seal in you. The seal is the Holy Spirit in you. Now God is going to come back and he's going to take you and he will identify you by the Holy Spirit in you. Let us see some scriptures. 2 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 21 and 22. Now he who establishes us with you in Christ and is anointed us is God who also sealed us and given us the spirit in our hearts as a guarantee. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 5. Now he who has prepared us for this very thing is God who also has given us the spirit as a guarantee. This is a picture of three-step process of redemption of God in your life. The price God already paid by the death of Jesus Christ on the cross. Now, as you belong to God, God put his personal seal in you, the promised Holy Spirit in you. And because of this personal seal, you belong to God. And because of this personal seal, you are separated from the world. You are different from other people of the world. 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 19 Nevertheless, the solid foundation of God stands. Having this seal, the Lord knows those who are his and let everyone who names the name of Christ depart from iniquity. The Holy Spirit is a gift for every believer. When a person receives new life in Jesus Christ, and through the baptism of Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside that person. The Holy Spirit helps that person to live in righteousness, in holiness, and to obey God wholeheartedly. First John chapter 4 verse 13. By this we know that we abide in him and he in us because he has given us of his spirit. God not only saved us from sin. He not only purchased us back, but also he puts a seal of ownership over our life. That seal is Holy Spirit in you. That Holy Spirit is a person who helps you to live a godly life, to live a holy life, to obey God. Also, the Holy Spirit helps you to do the works of the ministry. The baptism of Holy Spirit. Baptism of Holy Spirit is a very important step of faith when we receive new life in Jesus Christ. When a person hears the gospel, the Holy Spirit brings the conviction of sin in that person's heart. Then the Holy Spirit helps that person to repent from his sin. And that person by his own faith repent and turn away from sin and he turned towards God. Not only that, by his own faith, that person get baptized in water. Bible tells us there is something called baptism of Holy Spirit. And through the baptism of Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside the person. The baptism of Holy Spirit is a very important step of faith during new life experience. In the book of Acts, we can see people who repented from their sin, they got baptized in water and they also got baptized by the Holy Spirit. When people got baptized by Holy Spirit, we can see from the scripture, they started doing prophecy, they filled with joy, they started worshipping God and they started speaking in tongues 
The baptism of Holy Spirit has a physical manifestation. When a person hears the gospel, the Holy Spirit brings the conviction of sin in that person's heart. But that is not the baptism of Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit helps that person to repent from his sins. But that is not the baptism of Holy Spirit. Baptism of Holy Spirit is a separate incident that happens in the life of that person when the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside that person. In the book of Acts, we can see that baptism of Holy Spirit is a separate incident which happened for these born again people. They received the Holy Spirit inside them and then they started living by the guidance of the Holy Spirit. Every born again person should receive the baptism of Holy Spirit. Without receiving baptism of Holy Spirit, without receiving Holy Spirit in our life, we are not belong to Jesus. Bible tells us in Romans chapter 8 verse 9, if you do not have Holy Spirit in you, then you do not belong to Jesus. So every born again person who repented from their sins, he got baptized in water, we should receive the baptism of Holy Spirit. We should receive the Holy Spirit inside us. When we receive Holy Spirit inside us, we belong to Jesus. God puts the seal of ownership over our life that this person belongs to me. I am the owner of this person's life. God puts the seal and God becomes the owner of that person's life. When the Holy Spirit is there in you, you belong to Jesus. If you believe in Jesus Christ, if you have repented from your sins and you got baptized in water also by your own faith, but you are not very sure about the Holy Spirit in you, you should read the scripture and understand this, that without Holy Spirit, you do not belong to Jesus Christ. You must receive the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit baptism, the Holy Spirit in you. When the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside you, God puts the seal of ownership over your life. You belong to Christ. That's why baptism of the Holy Spirit is must for every born again believer. The fruit of the Holy Spirit is God's nature in you. When the Holy Spirit lives inside you, the Holy Spirit imparts God's character in you. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 tells about these fruits. Galatians chapter 5 verse 22 to 23 says, But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such there is no law. The fruits of the Spirit do not grow overnight. They need to be cultivated. Means we need to live a life of obedience continuously so that the fruits of the Spirit will grow in our life. Means our character become more and more godly as we live in obedience to God. As we obey God, our character will be more like God. The Holy Spirit also gives us gifts. Bible tells us these gifts are given to all who are born again in Jesus Christ, who receive new life in Jesus Christ, who receive the Holy Spirit. These gifts are given to them. These gifts are given for common good. These gifts are given for work of the ministry. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 to 11, these gifts are mentioned. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of Spirit, to another different kinds of tongues, to another interpretation of tongues, but one and the same Spirit works all these things, distributing to each one individually as he wills. These gifts cannot be earned. These gifts are free gift of Holy Spirit who is in you. 
if you have received new life in Jesus Christ and the Holy Spirit is in you, then the Holy Spirit gives this free gift to us. We don't need to do certain things to get this gift. The Holy Spirit gives these gifts free of cost. These gifts are given to all who receive new life in Jesus Christ, who receive the Holy Spirit. These gifts are not given to selected few people. These gifts are given to all. That is what the scripture says. If you have received new life in Jesus Christ, if the Holy Spirit is in you, these gifts are in you. Maybe you have to learn how to operate in these gifts, but these gifts are already inside that person who received the Holy Spirit. When you operate in spiritual gifts, the Holy Spirit manifests through you. When the Holy Spirit manifests through you, you operate a supernatural way which is beyond the understanding of human level. God wants you to operate in supernatural way so that you can minister others. The Holy Spirit is a unique person in your life. The Holy Spirit helps a person to be convicted of a sin. The Holy Spirit helps that person to repent from his sin. The Holy Spirit helps that person to receive new life in Jesus Christ. Then the Holy Spirit comes and lives inside that person. Holy Spirit start helping that person to live in holiness through the sanctification process. And the Holy Spirit helps that person to obey God in daily life. Not only that, the Holy Spirit gives the fruits, the character of God. Also, the Holy Spirit helps that person to operate in the gifts, which is the powerful manifestation of the Holy Spirit in the supernatural to minister others. This way, Holy Spirit prepares us for the second coming of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit prepares us for final salvation. Holy Spirit prepares us to meet with our husband, Christ. The Holy Spirit in you is a very unique person. He helps you. He prepares you. He guides you. He enables you to live a godly life. May God bless you with this passage. Thank you.